All right, in my last video, I got called out by my boy Wes. Wes was pointing out that on the latest testing I did for the modules, uh, Ghost, Tracer, Express LRS, and others that are on the sheet, I did not have EdgeTX loaded with Megabot enabled, which provides some benefit to Express LRS. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what the heck is he even talking about with Megabot in EdgeTX and see if it makes a difference. Okay, so for Megabod to be enabled, you have to first have EdgeTX loaded on your radio. Welcome to EdgeTX. And Joshua Bardo has a great video. I'll make a link to that in the upper right to check out how to load up EdgeTX. If you're on Express LRS, uh, Ghost, or Tracer, I would recommend getting on EdgeTX at this point. Uh, and it doesn't even hurt if you're using FR Sky Gear. It's really the next evolution of OpenTX. Uh, and it has a number of improvements and there's gonna be even more coming along the way. But once you have it loaded, what you wanna do is hold down long press to get into the system menu if you're on a QX7, there's, it's different for different radio types, but you wanna get into your global system menu. And I'm gonna to go to page six. So I'm gonna long press my page button to go backwards and then long press it again. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom, roll up around. And one thing I wanna make sure while I'm in here is to turn off the ADC filter. So make sure you do that, um, that's universal. And then you can go in and it's not enabling it per se, but it's, you have different baud rates here you can choose. So it might be default of 1500 or 1500. Uh, 400,000 is really the max you could go with OpenTX, but with Megabod you can see it can go up a couple, two, three more steps. Now on my QX7 here, I am limited to the 3.75 million baud but uh, uh, other radios can go even higher than that. So you can go all the way up to 5 million some odd and uh, that's recommended for Express LRS. So we're gonna go ahead and sit that and then just hit escape here to back out. Okay, so after that I re-ran some tests and you can see here I re-ran the Express LRS on the same version tests with EdgeTX now loaded and Megabot enabled, which I set it to the highest setting I could for my transmitter here. Then I also did this test again with the same version of Ghost 1.0.5.0 Sable, again, HTX Mega, and then Tracer as well, but Tracer does not support Megabot, so you can only, the highest you can go on Tracer is the 400,000, which is what I had already. And drum roll, it did make a difference. Now, the difference isn't night and day, but it did shave off about one millisecond of N10 latency. Before, Express LRS was getting four to five, five to six in its end to end on its, you know, 500 hertz uh, sampling rates, that's the fastest it can go. Now it is getting three to four, four to five, which is commensurate with uh, Ghost and it's three to four, four to five. Now even Ghost here had a couple uh, five to sixes uh, where in this test uh, Express did not. That kind of stuff can vary. I bet you I could redo this test and maybe get some uh, uh, five to sixes in it as well. So, you know, uh, we're, I wouldn't take too much onus in that. I would say they're about on par with each other uh, in regard to end-to-end -end latency. The other thing I see in here uh, that it didn't, you know, Tracer is the same, and I actually moved Tracer into the next block here because it's not, you know, they're they're kind of down here now, with just three to four. And, you know, this is four to five, five to six. So that's, but with these other two, I, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of in the next category up with NN latency at least. Now in regard to packet rate and jitter, didn't really make a difference. Uh, Express LRS was running about the same as it did before. Uh, same thing with Ghost. And again, same thing with Tracer. So packet rate and then jitter is all the same. You have a couple of lost frames here. And uh, it also coordinated a little bit with Alessandro, the creator, the original dev for Express LRS. There's lots of devs now. And uh, he was a little concerned with the ghost uh, just because there was no lost packets. So these couple spikes here are just lost packets um, that just didn't get transmitted because I have sync off and telemetry off in this regard. So he's saying, you know, that's kind of a sign when you have some lost packets. So is ghost cheating? Is there, are they, you know, if they have um, maybe uh, some time there, they're just re they're just duplicating the same packet over again and sending that that packet uh, if the timing doesn't come in right. So to look at that, we actually have to load up Betaflight and do a little log uh, thing here so we can see what that shows. So let's check that out. So here is the log for race 500, and what we're really looking for is you can see this little. It's <laughs> maybe you can see it. 
it's this uh, this little bump that's uh, there and that would be a missed or duplicated packet and what I'm looking for is a repeatable pattern in that so you can see one is here so there is missing packets it just happened not to miss any when I was sending those 500 samples in the previous test because that's doing a pulse pretty much at this speed of uh, you know sending a, a packet pulse and then is there any mist or anything of that nature so it just didn't catch any it doesn't seem but you saw one there you saw one over there but I'm not seeing anything else meaningful in packet loss and it is a it is a small little blip because of the, the rate so fast so you can see on this sweep there's one here unless they're really spaced apart it looks like there's one here so it would have to be quite a bit of spacing apart and this is the throttle command uh, you can see now we're seeing a little bit more here so as I look through this data and scrub through I'm not seeing anything that's a distinct easy to detect pattern it would be helpful if those debug modes would work uh, then you clearly see uh, patterns you gotta it's kind of hard doing it this way but I'm not seeing anything and, and let's just compare this versus express lrs just to see you know do we see a difference in the feed forward traces because that's what this really is all about is you know having a smooth receiver signal so that uh, you can get the most out of feed forward and stick tracking and all that kind of good stuff so looking at logging and looking at the feed forward traces between the two you can see we have on the left here this is ghost at 500 hertz and this is express lrs at 500 hertz as well now this has sync on for express lrs that's those spikes you'll see um, you don't actually see them in the the testing because i turned sync off uh, but if i had it on you'd see those those higher spikes so this kind of demonstrates too that those spikes um they don't it's not that detrimental to double that frame every so often and i think you're in for express lrs it's around five seconds now in the 2.0 releases so it's it's pretty far apart 500 milliseconds is or 5000 milliseconds is is pretty far apart so uh nevertheless you can see this is where the the rubber meets the road uh ultimately we're looking for that low jitter to pr produce a good uh, feed forward signal now this does not have the optimum feed forward settings in both of these so that it would be cleaner if you load the presets which we'll talk about that in a second because they are important to load but uh, I'm just trying to compare apples and apples here between the two so you can see just some sharp uh, roll moves here and you can see kind of the smoothness of this line versus then the smoothness of this line and you can see the same here more of a true tell is just moving the stick slowly that kind of reads your jitter and again this doesn't have the optimal feed forward settings uh, which we'll talk about but you can see we're just kind of comparing these down here and you can see that between the two they're pretty much the same result between the two between express lrs and ghost uh, between the amount of jitter that's carrying forward into the feed forward signal now in Betaflight 4.3 there are presets for your RC link so if you go into the presets tab and you click down here you can see there are a number of them are checked but we're going to uncheck a bunch of these just so I can see the RC links presets and then you can see the different ones you definitely want to use these for these higher speed uh, link protocols you're saving that end-to-end -end latency but there's uh, there's some jitter stuff you have to deal with so the settings need to not be the default the settings that are default default for beta flight are more set for like a fr sky kind of radio link where your end, end latency is longer but then there's not a the the packets aren't as small so um uh, it just it just changes things there's uh, they're tailored really to that just kind of a conventional link when you have a faster uh, rc link with the end, end latency and everything you definitely want to apply these specifically for 500 hertz now down here there is uh, one that says express lrs 500 hertz that uh, chris thompson developed the ctz snooze he's the architect uh, mostly for feed forward stuff nowadays so he knows what he's talking about and and there's a bunch of express lrs guys that are also contribute to data flight as well so i'm sure they've been coordinating but you'd want to apply this for ghost or express lrs basically anything that's at 500 hertz now in the future if you see ghost ones come up here specifically um, you go ahead and apply those separately but as of right now there's only an express lrs for 500 hertz so we're going to go ahead and apply that you'd hit pick and then hit save and reboot and then i will apply it so this is with the preset on the left here uh the race so it's the uh, express lrs 500 hertz uh, the race preset you can see the amount of uh, jitter that's translated into the feed forward command is a heck of a lot less and that's why you definitely want to apply those presets 
And this further outlines that point. On the left here, you can see the same setup, same everything. This is Betaflight 4.2.11 uh, with the Express LRS 500 sync on, and this is just the default. And then this is Betaflight 4.3, but it has that preset applied. And like we just showed before, there was a heck of a lot more wiggles and wobbles down in this line on Betaflight 4.3 default without the preset. So with the preset, you're kind of, you know, lining back up again to where you need to be. Uh, and that's why the presets are there. Okay, well that is it. Hopefully you found that helpful on understanding the advantages of Edge TX. There's one of the advantages. There's also bitrate improvements that are part of that for stick resolution and just what you can do with that mega baud rate. Now one thing you do want to be cautious of if you're using the mega baud is to just double check that your Express LRS module is running at the, at the rate you're having it set at. I had my radio on for quite a long time doing this testing and I noticed uh, thanks to the help of some of the devs on the Betaflight Slack, that it was not actually running at 500 hertz for some of the tests, and I had to retest it. So how to do that is, if you have an Express LRS loaded, is you just go into the Lua script. So you can see here, I just you know hold down my page button and tab one over to go into the Lua script here, because that's how I have it set up. And then you can see right here where it says 500 hertz. That's the operational. Uh, speed that it's running at. This is the set speed right here. So 500 hertz is what I'm desiring to run at. This is actually a debug mode up here showing what it's actually running at. In my case, that was actually running at 250 uh, while I did some of the tests. Now, I had my radio literally on for hours. Uh, I had, it, had to have it plugged in because the battery kept going dead. So just double check that if you have it on for a long time, uh, especially if you're going up 5 million, so on and so forth. Uh, and again, the QX7 is kind of an older radio at this point, so maybe it's just isolated to this, and it could just be because I had my radio on so long as well. And it does matter because if that is reporting at the wrong rate, it's going to have Betaflight's filtering at the wrong rate. So it, it will do filtering maybe at 250 hertz if that goes down to 250, where it's really sending 500 hertz, which is it's not good. You don't want it to be messed up. You're, you'd have more feed forward jitter if this doesn't have the right setting or reading on it. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop them down below. Where I'm going to go from here for testing is, you can see behind me, I already started. I'm going to check out some uh, other receiver, more conventional receivers, the FR Sky XM Plus. Now, it doesn't have telemetry, so I want to go, uh, do one with telemetry and, and kind of do a separate video for that. But until then, thanks, everybody. Hope this helped, and I'll see you in the next one.